Welcome. For many people, one of the things affected most by the pandemic has been when, where and how we work. For a lot of us, it accelerated a trend towards greater flexibility. For others, it made them question what they want from their workplace, their employer or their career. Now, as organisations address these challenges to create a world of work that works for everybody, they may find answers in some unexpected places. Today, we're talking about what business can learn from entertainment, from providing greater choice and personalisation to the need to provide access on any device from anywhere. To discuss these topics, I'm joined by Fiona Kamanzuli, People and Organisation Network Leader at PwC, Carolyn Horn, EMEA President at Workday, and Timothy Armu, Founder and CEO of Fanbytes. Welcome. I'm looking forward to talking to you, but we're here to talk about what business can learn from entertainment. Now, it's not an obvious connection. So, Fiona, do you want to explain the link briefly? Yeah, I mean, if we think about the entertainment industry has gone through enormous transformation. So it's moved from what we used to be used to in the old days, so fixed physical media, to now, you know, on-demand streaming, entertainment companies really thinking about their customers' preferences and actually using data to try and understand their customers better and then tailor content and see much more personalization. And actually the workplace and employment is moving that way as well. So actually, if you think about, you know, people, employees actually now want to think about where they work, how they work, you know, what they might be doing with their work and what they're getting out of it. And actually, I think it's really important for companies to be thinking about the preferences their employees have because people actually want more choice. It's interesting uh, what you say, uh, Fiona. There, there's no question that, you know, our lives have been transformed, you know, both in, at work and also in our home life. And I think it's only natural that we would expect a same level of personalization and choice in, in our, our working life. People are evaluating their, you know, their, their jobs at the moment and thinking about what is it I really want um, you know, from an organization or you know, for my career going forward. If you think about the parallels of what's going on in the entertainment or what has happened last say 10 years, it's almost that people didn't realize that you could actually just watch anything you want at any time you want. And now it's become the norm. And what COVID has done is actually, a lot of people didn't realize that actually you could work anyhow you want and anywhere you want. And so it's almost as if the same fascination that people had when things like um, on-demand TV came. It's like, what? I don't need to sit down at 10 p.m. to watch this. I can actually watch it at any point. That same fascination and that same almost like wonderment is happening in the workplace. And that's a pretty good space to be in as an employer because you basically get to, I'd say, like rewrite the rules, basically. Sometimes this topic can be skewed towards people who can work remotely. But what about those industries where people have to go to work? How can they transform? Well, I think there are lots of ways that companies can think about how they provide flexibility and think about the employee experience. So it definitely is not just about people who are working in offices or those who can work remotely. I think whether it's people working in schools, hospitals, factories, actually companies can think about flexibility around how they pay people, what benefits they provide, what hours they offer and choice around flexible working. So actually there's a lot of things that companies can think about really broadly to provide flexibility. It's not just about the whole question of flexibility or whether you work remotely or not. Because people are questioning now more than ever, what, are, what am I getting out of work? What, what is this experience bringing for me? And do you think businesses are really looking at that? I, I think they're starting to, yeah. And I think that they are, a lot of them are recognising um, that what their employees want is to be really clear about what the company's about. So I think this, you know, the question of purpose and articulating values, I think that's really important to people. Um, of course, there's a commercial aspect to work for everybody. But I think that that is really, really important. And I also think a lot of companies are now realising that actually they've got to listen to their employees more and they've got to understand them. And again, another, another parallel with the entertainment industry where, you know, Netflix and Spotify, they will use data a lot to understand their customer preferences and then understand actually what they provide for them and tailor it. And I think companies are starting, starting to do that, but they're going to they're do it in different ways. So how can businesses and organisations create the right culture um, to inspire and motivate their employees? 
I mean, culture is just crucial. Every employee, all, all the interviews that I'm doing at the moment, you know, the, people are looking to come to a great place to work. That's absolutely at the top of their mind. They want to feel empowered. They want um, an organisation that matches their, their own core values. And really, you know, I think culture is created by the whole organisation, but really it does, you know, come from the top. And, you know, if I reflect on, on how we started, our, our co-founders, they made a point of interviewing the first 500 people when they started up the company to really try and embed that, those right, that right culture, their mission and their values that would be inspirational and motivational. Yeah. And um, and from there on, you know, really driving that into the, the setting that foundation, and then driving it into the organisation, and then you know from there on, before the pandemic, we'd bring together all people leaders again to align on the culture, the mission and values, make sure everyone's aligned, and then I think it's empowering the people leaders after that, giving them the data and the insights, so that they're accountable to ensure that every employee's experience is a good one. One of the things I guess which might be slightly different is. At Fanbytes, I think the average age is probably about 23 or 24, right? Because um, our whole thing is, you know, helping brands to reach a young audience, so therefore have a bunch of young people. Um, and there's two key guiding principles that we use to think about creating um, culture. The first thing is about recognition. So I think we are very quick to recognize even, you know, somewhat somewhat simple things, right? And, and the reason why is because for most people, because they have so much choice as to where they can work, a lot of it actually came to the recognition that you're able to give to your staff. And so I think that's a key thing about like building a culture, which is all about, can you give people enough recognition where this is not just seen as a job to be done for them? And then the second thing, so a lot, of my, um, a lot of my employees don't like it when they ask me a question because my instant answer is like, you go figure it out. Like every single time. It's like, right, so you go figure it out. In fact, two days ago, someone actually asked me, so before I ask you this question, can you not tell me to go figure it out? <laughs> and I said, you go figure it out. And they came back. And they figured it out. Yeah. Um, but the reason why I say that is because one of the biggest things, one of the biggest things that I've seen work so well is this idea of giving people ownership over the way that they achieve the outcome. So that to me has been a big managerial and cultural shift that we've done. I'm always asking people, does it make the boat go faster? So anything you do, I don't care how you do it, just like, does it make the boat go faster? And those two things have been two key drivers, this recognition and ownership of the inputs as long as it gets to um, the output. I do think the leadership, the whole question of leadership is really important because organisations are, a lot of them that we talk to are moving away from old rigid structures. And again, another parallel to the entertainment industry where you know, becoming more networked and becoming more agile and more fluid and less hierarchical, you know, to the point around empowerment. And that requires a different type of leadership. And, and it does influence the culture a lot. So thinking about, you know, organisations think about what's, what leadership skills, what human, you know, traits and behaviour they, they, they want from their leaders to create that really good role model. Because I think it is going to be different to companies, you know, even five years ago. What sort of leadership skills do you think work well, I think, As we move forward then? For me, empathy is probably one of the most, you know, the ability to empathise, the ability to listen and to have compassion, I think are probably, you know, some of the most important skills, those real, really human traits that allow you then to recognise the individual, um, encourage, you know, creativity, encourage people to speak up, giving people courage. The continual listening to your workforce is absolutely crucial, but importantly, showing them that you're acting on that is not just, you know, the listening. You actually have to act upon it and do something about it. And when your workforce see that you're doing that and you're you're accountable for that, you really get that engagement. Does that go back to personalisation about everybody 
is an individual and can bring and contribute something to an organisation. So it's just not one, you know, one umbrella. There's loads of little factions and expertise within it that you have to pick out and your employees have to trust you to tell you about it so that they feel comfortable and they can explore that. For me, it, it definitely goes to the personalisation piece, but it also goes to actually being in a world where you've really got to understand the person, the individual and making a real effort to understand individuals for who they are. And I think organisations, you know, as they seek to build diverse, inclusive cultures, it's important that they empower individuals because that's how you unleash creativity in your organisation. It's how people feel engaged and actually they belong and, and they, you know, it, it gives that connection. Employees, they need to feel connected in their organisation. They want to feel connected to a culture that, that suits them. They want to feel capable and back to all the discussions around the learning and the growth opportunities. And they want to feel cared for as well. And if organisations can drive that through a really strong employee experience, then, you know, I, you know, I think we'll be in good shape. But honestly, can the experience of work ever be like the customer experience? Is that realistic? <laughs> can we really have choice at work? I, I do. I do think it's uh, realistic. I, I think, you know, with the use of technology, we, we can mimic what we, we've done in the, the entertainment industry. And if you think about the entertainment industry and the stickiness of the fans, that's really what we want to create in the workforce as well and have that, that stickiness for employees. But it does require, you know, good, strong technology for, in, in order for employees to really engage in the organisation and 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 be invested and know that the organisation is looking after them. They care about their career. They're offering up personalised development. Um, they are empowered, as as you said, uh, Tim earlier, and and they feel in a safe environment as well. And if you have that sort of experience with, you know, consumer grade technology that will allow them to engage from wherever they are, whether whether, you know, they're at home working remotely or in the office. I, I think we can get there. So if I think about the, the last time that I got into a good uh, show, right, um, there was this idea of just flow. If you think about that experience, then the question is, can you give that type of experience to an employee? And I think that that is entirely possible because I do believe there's so much choice in the world that people would only stay somewhere and be in flow and work for as long as it's benefiting them. And as long as they feel that they are growing, as long as they feel that they're constantly learning new things. And I think for as long as people can constantly feel like they're in flow because they're always learning new things and new skills and having new experiences, you would actually be able to have a similar feeling of flow as when you get lost in a new TV show because you get lost in the learning and the growth and the, oh, this is new, this is new, this is new, this is something that I haven't seen before. If you look at a lot of organisations, they often collect data about why people leave. And one of the most common reasons is lack of professional development. Right? Yeah. That, that, that learning journey stops. And we're a long way from the times when people had a job for, you know, from when they're 18 to life, when they're yeah. 65. So I think companies need to definitely understand their role in helping people through their whole employment journey through their whole life and one company might just be one part of that mm. but giving them the learning and the skills I think the tricky thing for companies is this question about you know we've we've been talking about giving employees lots of choice but what we haven't talked about is it's also all going to be to the to help the company achieve their commercial yes, objectives as yes. well and so how do you marry those two up? Because for some companies, culturally, they might feel more uncomfortable going to loads of choice because they're like, well, we've got to achieve these corporate objectives. So trying to work out how you do that, you know, and, and you know, Timothy, what you said earlier about giving, empowering people to sort of work out how to do something themselves as long as they can get yeah. to that end aim. And I think that's something that companies have to work through. We really need to focus that, but again, getting the balance right, because in the end, you know, we've got company goals that we do have to reach. So it's getting that balance around really developing the people, but also, you know, delivering against the bottom line as well. Thank you so much. Um, and I hope you've found this discussion as fascinating as I have. And I'd like to thank our guests for sharing their insights and opinions. And I hope you'll also enjoy the other episodes in this series, exploring how business challenges are better solved together. <laughs>